Hello guys and welcome for another New World Eternum video. Season 6 and the official release of Eternum is just around the corner, as there is less than one month until the scheduled date of October 15th. Hopefully there will be no further delays and we will get the chance to hop back into the fresh start servers to feed our nostalgia over the game. As we all know, there are quite a lot of changes not only to the combat but also to some of the items that already exist in the game as well as the upcoming new artifacts and legendary pieces. Will the current meta shift to other builds or previous variations or will it become even more fortified to the heavy melee? Well, I guess that only time will tell as we are not able to test the things in the game yet. However, one thing that I wanted to share with you today is the build which is my personal favorite for quite some time now and it's my go-to when it comes to solo PvP. This of course is the Fire and Ice Pylon build. In general, it provides a huge burst of damage, good sustain and kind potential, as well as quick maneuvering through the terrain in all types of PvP combat. The build, which I was calling Critical Mage build in the past, lost a bit of its power when the keen and vicious perks were nerfed, but in the right hands it can still do wonders. You might ask, what is coming with the Season 6 and the release of Eternum to revive this build? Keen and vicious perks are not getting buffed, so how come the critical build will be good again? Well, I guess you are here to find the reason why and I hope that I will prove to you why it would be amazing. Without further ado, Let's dive into it and hold tight as it might be a bit longer than usual. I will start with the skill trees for both weapons as they are fixed and regardless of your weapon or armor choices, they will remain the same. The Ice Gauntlet skill tree is exactly the same as the current live version of the game. You want to have almost fully the right side with only one passive from the left called Critical Rejuvenation. The main reason of course is the pylon with all the upgrades and the other passives which will provide you extra speed, cooldowns, fortification, mana recovery and easier blocking with the ice gauntlet. When we look at the fire staff there are some changes which were forced mainly due to the change done to the right side ultimate ability called backdraft. For those who don't know and probably never use this ultimate, Upon heavy attacking a target with 3 stacks of smolder, the stacks will be consumed and will cause an explosion, dealing 150% weapon damage with 2 meters radius and all that will be on a 6 second cooldown. Previously the required stacks were 5, the damage was 100% and the cooldown was 10 seconds. As you can imagine, all those requirements were the exact reason why people were avoiding this ultimate passive completely. The problem comes when we need to have the 10 used skill points on the right side in order to open up the backdraft. As we already have the 3 points in burnout plus the few passives around it, it will have exactly 10 points to open up the necessary ultimate passive. I know that some of those passives are not amazing and they were not even used previously, but if you don't run flamethrower or incinerate in your build, there is no other option to gain the access to backdraft. Spending 11 points on the right side skill tree of the fire staff means that we are limiting our left side choices. There are few passives like the one that gives you 15% critical damage or the one that gives 10% critical chance to all your abilities or the one that gives an extra smolder on each light and heavy attacks. You also don't want to miss out on the 5% in power while you have above 50% mana. So in no time we are left with only 4 skill points to spend over the remaining skills. For me the choice is simple and that would be 2 points into fireball so I can get the extra smolder stack upon hitting a target and the 2 points into pillar so I can get the extra 5% damage for each smolder stack. If you feel like the 10% cooldown on heavy attacks or the 5% mana gain back on a heavy attack is better for you, feel free to give it a shot. Moving over to the attributes, we have to take in consideration that at first we will not have the access to the full amount of points due to the fact that 725 gear score will take some time to acquire. 
Therefore, the baseline for me would be to invest 150 to 200 constitution, depending on your personal skill level, followed up by 25 decks for the extra critical chance, and all of the remaining points will go into intelligence. Keep in mind that dexterity and critical in general would be highly necessary for all the mage users due to the fact that mana will be even a bigger issue than now. If you don't use mana potions like me and you want to slot a defensive potion for elemental protection, like fire for example, you will need to rely on your critical hits in order to keep your mana high. Another note about that is the change to the passive code spell focus, which is now only providing 5% mana back, while previously it was making all heavy attacks free of mana. And now it's time for the most interesting part of the build, and of course the part where we can see the reasoning why I believe this combo of fire and ice will be an extremely good choice for the upcoming season 6. Let's take a look at the armor pieces and their respective perks so we can prepare ourselves ahead of time. The most important part and the first item would be the new artifact gloves called Ghostly Touch. They come with Enchanted Ward which will remain the best defensive perk out there and Refreshing which is also extremely necessary for all mages. Especially when we don't have the passive Fury Restoration as we don't have enough points to use it, which was reducing all cooldowns with 10% whenever we hit an enemy with a heavy attack. The unique passive of the artifact will provide us with empower for 10 seconds every time we hit an enemy with active empower on them. The effect will last for 10 seconds, but the cooldown for it is only 4 seconds, which means that we can maintain the 10% empower almost at all times. Not only that, but we will also strip down two empowers from the enemy whenever we hit them, so the effect will be even more significant. Here is good to note that probably empowers without duration will not be stripped off from the enemy and they will remain. Such empowers are leadership, oblivion bonus, rune glass, harnessing, damage type from the ring, and so on. For the last perk on the gloves, I would prioritize conditioning instead of harnessing as I believe that with all the other items we will potentially reach in power cap and also let's not forget that there are other people around us in the game modes such as OPRs, arenas, wars and even outside world PvP. For the remaining armor pieces, like I said earlier, the priority for perks is identical to the current live version. Enchanted Ward will remain the best defensive perks, followed up by Conditioning and Shirking Heals. Since health is also getting a change towards the nerf side, I would suggest you to aim at Enchanted Ward, Conditioning, which can be Slash or Trust, and of course Shirking Heals. If necessary, and if you want to have weapon perks such as Entomb, Fireball or Pillar, you can also get them. If you really want to have higher in power, it would not be bad to also go for 4 harnessings as well, but I would value more the defense over the offense in the next upcoming season. Going over to the jewelry, we have a stable pick for both the amulet and our earring. For amulet, my choice would be the same as the current live version of New World with slash or thrust protection, stamina recovery and refreshing. For earring, I like to use Refreshing Toast, Refreshing and Nimble, but for OPR games, I prioritize Purifying Toast over the Nimble due to the cleanse effect. The best ring for the mages in Season 6 is up to a debate. There are two types of rings which are both suitable, but there is a risk in both of them. The first one is the new artifact called Elemental Band. I know, I know, I said that it's not that good, but for that build it's actually working and due to the pylon we can make it even better. Let me explain. The main perks on each ring for a mage are always hearty and refreshing. This leaves us with the choice of keen or type of an elemental damage which technically means empower. If we choose keen we would have better mana management due to the higher chance of critical hits and if we choose the empower we will get closer to the empower cap of 50%. 
Elemental Band, the new artifact, is providing us with both. As it has Hearty and Keen as two fixed perks, we can choose Refreshing as a third perk and the unique passive will give us in power of 4% for each elemental hit on an enemy player. In order to maximize our damage, we want to place an elemental gem on our ice gauntlet, so each hit from the pylon will deal a split elemental damage. For example, if we place a rune glass nature gem, we will apply ice and nature damage, which will give us 8% in power for the next 6 seconds. Meanwhile, hitting targets with your fire staff, causing fire damage, will also provide a stack of 4% in power, so this way we can hit a 12% in power in short time. Keep in mind that the internal cooldown for each element is 10 seconds, so you cannot keep the empower at all times like we did with the artifact gloves. The other approach for a ring would be to choose normal 3 perks and there if you choose the type of damage you will have a stable 8% at all times. However the downside of this would be that you would not have the different elements and you are also losing the keen perk which will keep you higher chance of critical hits. Enough with the rings and the stories about elements, ponies and different fairy tales. Let's get into the real deal with the weapons for the build. Here there is even more variety mostly about the fire staff choice as we still need to see the live version of this new Aeternum so we can test the things and see how they work. The ice gauntlet for the build will be the normal crafted one as the deep freeze, the artifact, is not suitable for pylon builds at all. You want to get an ice gauntlet with the perks pylon? Keen and for third you can choose between Attunement, Play Crits or Keenly Jacked. Is that simple and quick. Also don't forget to place your elemental type of gem and it has to be something different than fire. For fire staff in this critical pylon build we have three different options. I will go over all of them and I will try to explain what are the different circumstances for each of them to be used. The first one will be the artifact Inferno. Shout out to Charlie T who was talking about it on stream and mentioned a change that was datamined which might make this artifact extremely good. Not only that we are getting a gem slot in the Inferno but the 15% damage to 15 meters of range are believed to be active on both your weapons. If that change comes true and that would be the case Inferno might become the choice for this build without a doubt, as it has already Vicious and Keenly Empowered, for a third perk you are quite limited and the best option might be the Attunement. Even if the change to Inferno works, I think personally that there is one other fire staff which is the best due to the illegal combination of perks. This of course is the well known flint stick which comes from the PvP track with Vicious and Alacritus Punishment perks. Both of them are from the same perk bucket and both are extremely good for any mage out there. For the third perk the choices can be many and it will mostly depend what are you aiming at. You can go for healer pressure with play crits or you can go for more damage with attunement. You can also play skin for better mana management or even play Keenly Empowered for higher Empower levels. The choice is yours. Last but not least, if Inferno is not usable and Flint Stick cannot be upgraded to 725 gear score, we have to go with a specific craft of a Fire Staff. In my opinion, the two must have perks on it would be Attunement and Alacritus Punishment. For third perk, I would leave the choice again to you as again it's up to a personal goal which you have. Regardless of your fire staff choice, the gem for all of them should be only one, rune glass of ignited emerald. This will definitely be the best gem as the extra damage to targets under 50% HP is just too good to pass on. Yes, some people still play with opal and they have a good damage uptime, but the goal for you should be to kill people and not just to do damage. The only items that we didn't discuss are the consumables and the heart rune for this build. 
I personally run with health potion, regeneration or serums and elemental protection potions. In wars, my last slot is used for cleansing, while in OPRs I slot food for extra recovery. Heart rune of choice can be the stone form for extra survivability, but feel free to play with others in case you have the freedom for it. That was all from me guys, I hope that this detailed explanation of the critical pylon build will find you well and that you will have nice results in Eternum. In case you want to share something from your kitchen or just to discuss stuff about Eternum, feel free to join my Discord community channel for which you can find the link in the description below. There you can also see the links to the different streaming platforms on which you can also support me and catch me live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.